Morning everybody. First thing in the morning, lovely day. But the odd cloud in the sky, things are definitely changing. And this week in the UK, quite a lot of people were going back to work, children were going back to school. And there is definitely a sign of life returning to whatever the new normal is going to be. And so it's given me a moment to think about what aspects of what's been going on in the last few months um, I can't wait to get rid of, and what aspects actually have caused me to re-evaluate uh, the way I write music, the way uh, I organise my life and all the rest of it. I'm sure the same is for you. Now, I'm well aware um, from the comments and obviously um, from talking to people, lots of people have had the most terrible, terrible time over the last few months and um, can't wait to get rid of the whole thing. But there are aspects of it, I think, which bear some reflection about you know, pace of life, the way we go about things, and even down to just going through the same old rigmarole time after time when you sit down to write or a piece of music. And that's really what I want to talk about today, because what we're going to do, we're going to go into what's laughingly known as shit, um, and start writing a little piece of music the way most people would, and examine how we might do that differently, and why is it that we tend to fall into the same patterns all the time, and then are shock horror, surprise, 30 minutes later, or two hours, or a day later, when what we come out with is the same piece of music. I mean, what's that all about? Oh, sorry, it's too early in the morning for drinks. <laughs> you remember this thing, you know, every time, everybody has a drink every time I put my arms in the air? You can't be doing that at seven o'clock in the morning. It's not good for you, trust me, it's not good for you. Right, so, that's what we're gonna be up to. Are you up for it? Let's go. Oh my lord, this shed is absolutely rammed. <laughs> because I haven't been in my main studio for quite a while, lots of gear has migrated here and I'm sort of gradually disappearing behind a wall of cables and headphones and all that. Right, let's get on with this. So here's my, my thesis. There's, there, this is all about what makes you sound like you. and. Um, that's a really fundamental question about what you're like as a musician, as an improviser, as a composer, as a songwriter. And I think there's several components to it, but one of the most important is, is your taste, what you like. Because it's not just technique and uh, your, the sort of knowledge of music theory and your ability to play an instrument, important as though these things are. Because when you sit down to play... Also, you fall into certain kind of habits, so you will always tend to start the same way. And you will, as you play, so you, I often start with this chord shape, as I've mentioned before. And so I'll start. And mysteriously, everything starts to sound like me because, firstly, I'm starting in the same place as I normally do. And secondly, I like stuff which I like. And... Every time I make a choice, I'm even if I start miles away from where I was. Um, it, no, don't like that. So much. I like that a bit more, maybe. Every choice I make directs me back towards what I normally sound like. Now, it, so this is partly why you know composers like you know John Williams and um, um, Hans Zimmer sound like John Williams or Hans Zimmer. Um, because when they make a creative choice, it's tending to narrow the field down to what they normally sound like. That actually, in Hans Zimmer's case, that's not always because he frequently just chucks out the bathwater and starts from scratch. So how do you do that? Two things we're going to do. We're going to, um, a lot of people, when they start writing, will start with a uh, piano sound loaded up. I've got a really interesting new piano library I want to run past you. I think it's great. I really, really like it. Um, it's the... Um, Bosendorfer Imperial from um, uh, VSL, Vienna Symphonic Library. Um, and I'll talk about that in a moment. The other thing I'm talking about is um, how you can start to second guess some of your own assumptions so you don't always turn out exactly the same piece of music. You're constantly trying ideas and some ideas you like and some you hate. And it's your taste, those choices you make, which ultimately define what your musical personality is. And you have to be aware of that. And in this lockdown period, where you've had lots of opportunity, trying to second guess that, that kind of what you like and try and find a way of 
reinventing it so it's still what you like but it sounds fresher and interesting and different is a massive challenge it takes time and time is one of those things right now you have and it is a golden opportunity to re-examine who you are as a musician to find ways of updating your sound finding new interesting ways of exploring i'll come on to that in a moment let me introduce you to my friend um uh the uh, uh bosendorf imperial from vsl um it comes in two forms it comes in the standard library uh, and it comes in the full library the full library which is this one has the most enormous number of different um mic positions high surround low surround so it looks sounds like you can do something approaching dolby atmos you can definitely do full 5.1 because it's got um the full uh tree center left right which is very unusual um the standard version comes with a room mix and a close mix and that gives you an enormous amount of control um there's a lot to love in this library i one of the things i've struggled with with piano libraries in the past is i either have a really bright library um which is something like piano tech which is very positive very sort of sharp and lovely or something sort of soft and intimate that makes me feel all tender like a flower um which would be something like emotional piano from um sound iron but wouldn't it be nice if i got both in the same place i think this is it look you can choose from a whole s okay it's concert intimate Player. Now, what player is, is, is the piano from the player's perspective, not from sitting out in the room. It's the sound that you and I are familiar with as you sit down at the piano. Okay. You've got a lot of control, which I really like, over dynamics. One of the things, as you know from previous ones I've banged on about sometimes, is that you don't have enough control over the, lev the, sort of the difference between light and shade and live and soft. This, you've got tons. The, the, I mean, I could go on for it. There is, look, there's tons of interesting uh, div, uh, stuff going on here, um, which make it quite different to other libraries. And I think this is rapidly becoming the one, for me, this is the sort of one to beat right now. So if I was going to have one piano in my setup, I think this is possibly it, because it makes it much easier. Also, it's just not that heavy-handed on the memory. Uh, 500 megabytes, which for, you know, a decent-sized piano is pretty pretty cool um it doesn't use very much do you like this do you like this cpu meter ah, i wonder what it would look like if i had a cpu meter like that and you could just plug in and you could see how much is guy thinking at the moment uh, just before we go any further uh, can i just remind you that this is available how to write music is my online course that takes you through every step of the process how to get going chord progressions, tune writing, developing and arranging your music, six hours of exclusive video tutorials, a course text packed with tips and a supportive online community. Get more out of your music and sign up today. Okay, so look, we're gonna, what am I gonna go with? I'm gonna stick with, uh, I'm gonna stick with Intimate for the moment. And the main, the main difference with these, maybe I'll just up the, Look, that's the room mic, close mic. Right, okay, now let's get down to this. Um, so what can you do to break out of this thing? So if you normally sit down, a uh, couple of things I know I always do, I, I tend to go to the same chord shape in the same key. Okay, so we try a different chord shape in a different key. Um, Do that okay so that's a slightly different direction i do tend to do uh sort of minimalist minimalist things involving fifths and i like d dorian so don't do it guy try something
So retain, look at the bits of it you want to retain. And in my case, for example, I'm, I'm quite fond of the, li miracle, uh, the lyrical minimalist thing. And try and reinterpret that, go to a different key. If you're, I think one of the main things is if you're aware of um, what makes you revert to these things each time and it allows you to challenge yourself to try and do things differently, that's a major step in the right direction. But you don't want to just chuck out the baby in the bathwater. If you're used to playing, sorry. <laughs> you're not suddenly going to go all atonal. You know, you can't jump from Jacques Lussier to Penderecki in one heap. That would be ridiculous. Well, pauses for thought. No, 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 that, that's probably not the best. Idea. Yeah, you want to take... An, there's a slight sort of sinking thing because um, if you're a working composer, you end up constantly reinventing yourself. And this is really... It's exhausting. It's utterly exhausting. And the rate, the cycle time is getting shorter and shorter. So, you know, you're, oh, well, that style I had this morning. Oh, it's half past two. Better get a new style. No, it's not a new style. It's constantly sort of chasing uh, some, new, some new half an idea. Um, so I would... Okay, so, well, there's an argument you don't... If you normally start on a piano, you start on something else. Um, which uh, would make a lot of sense as well. Um, don't... Uh, here's the other one. Most uh, doors default to 120 BPM. Most people don't change that when they start playing. Most doors default to 4-4. Four, four. Maybe 4-4 four, four isn't the best idea in the world. Well, it depends what you're writing. You know, but uh, suppose, just for the sake of argument, we think that, uh, I don't know, what am I going to go for? 7-4. What's wrong with 7-4? Absolutely nothing. So I've got something she's going to go 1-2, one, 1-2, two, one, two, one, two, 3. Okay, that'll do. This is going to get more challenging. Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure I don't quite like that. Okay, let's have another layer of piano. Um, what key did I do? Okay, oh, I've got to tell it what I want, haven't I? Where are you, little piano? Not little piano. Oh, the big piano. Uh, we're going to have, okay, try pop. Let's try a different mic mix. Okay, so I've got seven four to play with. One two three. One two three. One one. Two. That was rubbish. But it's a choice. Somebody else might have gone. Oh, oh, not me. Oh, you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. Oh. What a mistake! Push the little button and remember to push the little bell thing as well. And then you'll get reminded when we do this kind of stuff. Yeah, of course. I was trying to go on the offbeat. I succeeded in a kind of offbeat. Okay, that's not the worst. You can see how that might lead to something. It's okay, there's the problem. This is a problem with this keyboard, actually, to be honest. With you. It's really, really easy to hit maximum velocity, so everything comes out.
What, yeah, what is the point having a nice piano sample if you play it like that guy? Look at it. The colour red equals the colour full volume. No, turn it down. Play more discreetly. No, play it loud. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, let me check. Okay, let let me experiment and see if I can play with sensitivity. Play it loud again. <laughs> ah, just get in there, turn the volume up. But I quite like this piano. Okay. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Except it's not group like uh, Don't get into that guy. Don't get into that. So, okay, look, this has been a sort of little. I'm not going to go very far with this one today because. I just want to get this idea out there that um, I just want you to challenge what you like. That doesn't mean throw it all away, but be aware of the fact that some people fall in love with music at a particular time and age and then constantly reproduce that uh, sound for the rest of their musical lives. Um, it's like, you know, the first time you went out for dinner, you had... Uh, you know, spaghetti bolognese and all you eat for the rest of your life is spaghetti bolognese. That wouldn't be a good idea. Um, I don't know. Pauses for thought. No. Um, but the idea is don't just accept at first face value the choice you make the first time round. Just ask yourself, is there a different way of doing this? And can I retain, you know, the idea without... Uh, can I retain... You know, some of the things I like while finding other bits which are fresh and different. Go and try it. Go and try it now uh, before you run out of lockdown time and see if you don't come up with something which is a bit... Anyway, look. Um, so that's, that's all I'm going to do for you today. Um, it's a little short one today. Got more coming up. Interesting stuff. Um, but do check out this piano because I... It's, look, it's not... A, you know, I know how much you lot love free and cheap and this is a premium product it's currently 210 euros for the standard library and 395 for the full one and that may well be out of a lot of people's price range but it's less than you'd pay for a real piano and it's the most controllable flexible um uh virtual piano i've played and it's got this it's just really nice i really like it so it's going right in my uh template oh stick that in your template Another thing to go on a t-shirt, I suppose. Right, that's it from me. Uh, go out there and reinvent yourselves. See you soon.